can change the world. One life, one heart. One From the headquarters soul, of Global mind. Washington in Seattle, Washington, we have this question. What happens to political prisoners? We're going to be talking with one who really knows, from Fred Bioma from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Welcome, Fred. Thank you. So, Fred, um, political prisoners, we're going to get specific, but you're involved with an organization called Lucha? Yes. And what is Lucha? So, Lucha is a youth movement uh, which was created in, in Congo in 2012. It is, constitu it is constituted by uh, essentially young people from under 35 and uh, it is not a, a, an NGO, it is not a political party as well, it is just a movement. Um, it means it's a group of people who believe that they can uh, bring some change in their political si and civic system and transform their country uh, from the, the state it is uh, now, so the, the, the state of corruption, the state of uh, misgovernment, the state of, of all, all those tr trouble, and build a different society, build a different country, what to call uh, the Congo Nouveau, which means mm -hmm. um, a, a, a country where the, the, our values and principles, justice, human rights, human dignity, will be observed in, in, in that country. And we believe it is not a, uh, a matter of building a new structure, but building a new philosophy, a new kind of citizen. But you have a constitution. Yes. Why do you need a new constitution? We don't need a new constitution. We need a new, uh, a new kind of society, a new way of doing things. We have a constitution, actually, which is not respected in, in, in terms of, for example... The when you say not respected, it's not followed. It's not followed, yeah. It, it states so many rules, and if the government and other institutions could just follow the rules that are in our constitution, we could, didn't have any political crisis as it is now. We couldn't have the situation of political prisoners and, and other kind of killings. Mm -hmm. We could have... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Political prisoners and killings? Yeah, because... Uh, People are killed in Congo for their political views? Yeah, many many are killed in, for, for their political views. Some, some are known better than, than others, but uh, many people are uh, journalists, activists, or political um, opposition leaders, or people like that are, are, are killing in prison because of or because of the view since a very long time. Let me see if I can understand this the circumstance as to why it is that you need this movement. You've got a, a president now who kind of inherited the job in two thousand and one because his father passed away, who was president at the yeah, time. Exactly. And then there was an actual presidential election in two thousand and six, I think. Uh, yeah, 2006 and, he was, and 2011. Yeah, and the, there was also a constitution that was put into place that um, allowed a president to be in office for two terms. Exactly. And this, the current president, Kabila, is that how yeah, you say his yeah. name? He was elected for one term and then he was elected for a second term in 2011 and his second term is up. Exactly. But he won't leave office. He won't leave office. Normally he should have left the office since last year. By December 19 of, of 2016, he should have uh, stepped down and uh, leave the office to someone as uh, throw election. So we are in the situation when the government, instead of organizing election, has tried to find the way to postpone it uh, more and more. So, um, and last year we were campaigning for a. a the, the election to be uh, held in, in the timeline of the constitutional timeline and the government come out with the, uh, this argument saying it is impossible because of technical uh, issue, not the political uh, mm -hmm. willing, which we, we, we found to be f false. But they signed an agreement saying they can organize the election but in one year. So we say, okay, we will privilege peace and, and stability and we accept 
that that agreement can be can be respected. And now we are in the same situation like last year, where there will no they, there is no election, and the government is trying to postpone the, the election. So, is it the entire government, or is it just this president? I think the government is executing the program of the president and his uh, ruling party, ruling coalition. So, it is the government and not only the government and the president it is all the system actually because the uh, the, the government is leading that uh, policy the parliament is backing it by uh, trying to postpone all those laws w w which can lead to election the electoral commission seems to be under the order of government and the, the president and the, the the judiciary system is also used as a hand of oppression against all those all the people who come to speak out uh, against that plan to postpone and postpone again the election the president himself um, in 2012 the catholic bishops of yeah. not just the democratic republic of congo but the entire area said that the election was so corrupt that he probably was not reelected um, but he's still in office anyway. Um, the same president, his sister, was named in the Panama Papers, and then the same president, according to Amnesty International and Transparency International also, uh, has a significant financial interest in 70 different companies inside the Democratic Republic of Congo. While he is accused of making an awful lot of money, the people are poor. Exactly. The, the, and this is what's happened since uh, 1970 when, when Mobutu was in power. So the, the, this, the regime of Kabila came and saying they are trying to change the situation with the dictatorship of Mobutu and all the looting of resources. And it's come out that the, 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 the Kabila is doing exactly the same thing we, we, uh, that Mobutu da, uh, did in the past. And Kabila is doing it even very fast because what Mobutu did in 32 years, Kabila is doing it in just 16 years. So the Congolese people, are, Congo, these people are very poor. Congo is mo one of the poorest country in, in the world, although it is potentially one of the richest country I I in Africa. Yes, it has um, natural resources that go in just about everybody's cell phone across the world. Exactly. And Kabila's family, Kabila himself, and the, 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 the Kabila's regime, the Kabila's uh, people around him are getting richer and richer as, as the Congolese po people are getting poorer and poorer. And we think that the, poli the, the, the people in power in this moment, actually, and, and in the past, are not putting the interests of people in their, uh, as their priority. And that's why we, we decided to create a, a, a movement. Because if we, we could have the, a, a people, a, 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 the Congol if Congolese people could stand up and say, we don't need this anymore and hold accountable every one of their rulers from the MPs to the minister to the president. Maybe we could have a different, uh, a, a different kind of uh, ruling system because uh, the, 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 we believe that the uh, peop in, in a democratic system, the people is the only and the last safeguard of democracy and gov good governance. So, we can have uh, we can have people we can have p people in power who try to in, uh, get rich over the uh, poverty of people until the, the, the citizen and the people all the people stand up against that kind of uh, way of doing. We will continue to have those uh, uh, corrupted leaders at the head of our our states until we decide to stand up against them and to change not only one individual, but all the system which uh, allow him to stay and to, to, to get rich. Because if you, we are just focused on Kabila, we will replace him by another Kabila. We have to be focused on the system which uh, created people like Kabila. Fred. You sound like a leader yourself. How is it that you're able to lead this group of young people against some really difficult odds? 
I, I, I have to say we are lucky in, in Lucha to have uh, many people who are really dedicated. And uh, I think they are dedicated because the, the, uh, the future of Congo, the, the future that they are expecting, the future that they are uh, uh, struggling for, it's, it is on, not only the future of Congo, but it only, it's also their own future. They, we, we are, uh, the majority of Congo is people are young. Most of them are in high school or in, in college, and they can't expect to have a, a, a good job a, at the end of their studies. Mm -hmm. They can't expect to uh, be able to, to, to dream of something because their future are really uncertain. They, are, they live in a permanent uncertainty. So l trying to change the actual situation is in some way trying to change their own life and the life of the generation after us. What do you do to give them hope then? I, I don't know how to say what I do to give them hope, but I think our hope come in, on, in, in working together to go through this difficult path and toward, toward uh, freedom and democracy. Okay. Because Fred, I want to ask you about yeah. You spent a year and a half in jail. Yeah. Um, and why were you put in jail? So I was put in jail because I was asking for more freedom, more, more democracy in, in Congo. Because I was asking the president to step down by the end of his mandate and to give the chance to other person to rule the country. And that's a crime? Actually, it, is, it was a big crime in Congo because uh, at that moment I was considered like a terrorist and I was um, in prison for over 17 months. And actually, the charge against me, I, uh, I could face the death penalty. And I have to say that those charges is not uh, dropped. What was the charge against you? So I was accused of um, treason, of uh, attempt to kill the president, I don't know how, maybe with a pen. I was accused also to attempt to over, uh, to, to organize the putsch, something like, uh, like that. Okay, organize people to oppose the, the president's the, the, ideas. The president, yeah, exactly. Tell us about the arrest, how did it happen? So we were in a meeting in, in Kinshasa in 2015. A city of over 11 million people. Yeah. Large city. The cap, yeah, the, also the, the, the capital of the, the country. And we were organizing that, the, this uh, training on uh, civic involvement. And at the end... You were of training the a bunch of kids on civic involvement and you came and got arrested for that? Yeah. And, and actually, we, at the end of the training, we organized a press conference when we explained what we were doing. And we get involved, uh, arrest in that uh, in that press conference, and uh, so they, they they brought us to the uh, um, headquarters of of intelligence service, Congress intelligence service, and there we were uh, considered like terrorists. Actually, they said and in the media for many months that we were terrorists and we were uh, trying to uh, kill the president. I've never understand how that could happen. And so you were in, in prison then. Were you in prison there in Kinshasa? Yeah, so I was in prison in Kinshasa. I stay uh, 50 days in, in, in communicator without uh, in, any way to speak to my family or to see or to speak to my family. And then I was transferring a, a, the biggest prison in, in, in Congo where I spent the over uh, 15 months uh, and it was hard because it was very far from my my family who which who lives in 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 Goma two southern kilometer from Kinshasa and and I, I remember I was just 25 when I was arrested so it, it I, I wasn't prepared f to spend uh, that much time in, in jail and far from my family but here in the United States, we have a, a hard time understanding how this could happen to anyone. Um, 
there would be immediately you would have a right to an attorney and the attorney would then help you. Did you get to see an attorney? <laughs> That's just funny because they, uh, at the beginning you were talking about the constitution and the rule of law and all those things. That's what the, the, the our constitution say. I should have the right to see an attorney in, in less than 28 hours. I saw an attorney the first time after 50 days. And so almost two months you were two months, for the very yeah. first time you were allowed to see an attorney. Exactly. And, and when I saw the attorney and the judge, I didn't have any, the impression that I, have, I, I, I was in front of an independent institution. I, I, was, I had the impression that I, had, I, I was in front of the intelligence service which came out as uh, the, judici the digital system. So it, is, uh, it was a, a very big uh, disappointment for, for me to, to see how the justice doesn't exist. So you, you basically were just picked up and thrown in jail and just left there? Exactly. Tell us about a day in your life there in prison. Uh, at the beginning, it was very, very difficult, and I, uh, because I, I, I had to survive with quite nothing. And um, I, I remember that uh, I don't know how I can I can say that, that, but it was very hard, and I, sometimes I was thinking that maybe. Uh, I, I w my life will end at that moment without anything because uh, it was very hard. And then I become to adapt myself and to see, how, uh, to say to myself, if s some other survive in this situation, I can do it. And um, I, I start uh, knowing how they live in that situation and how I can survive. And then when I was se sent in in Makala prison, which is the main prison in the country where there is over 8,000 of people, people. The prison actually was created for just 1,500 people. Um, I s it was an interesting experience, although it was very difficult, because Makala is, for me, is just like Congo. It is full of um, different people, mix of different people from different areas, M many of them uh, are there uh, without any um, trial, any fair trial. There are many of them also are young people, mostly. They, will, they spend years because they, they, they took uh, $5 for someone or $1 for someone, and they never had uh, any trial. And I found also that um, people live in, in, in Makala, in that prison, with the highest uh, poverty that I've never seen in, in my life. And people are just dying in that prison. It's it, it, it just like a big uh, concent uh, camp de concentration, concentration camp mm -hmm. inside of, uh, of Kinshasa, which is, which is very sad. I learned how to live with in that situation, although I didn't accept that, that situation. And, um, I'm proud, I, I, I have to say that in, when I was in jail, I tried to continue my activism of trying to change the situation when I was. And I remember- How did you do that? When I, I started to, uh, to think about, because they, there was no any education, uh, any system of re-education in, in, in prison. Although those people, uh, uh, especially the young people in jail, was expecting to live and to uh, come back in their communities, they were not prepared to reintegrate the, the community. And I think uh, I thought that it was a big threat for them and for the society. And it was like they, are, they were rejected. So we decided with a couple of friends who w we were arrested with me, to think about a um, educational, a re-educational program in jail when we were prisoners. And it was very difficult because the environment didn't uh, allow th those kind of things. But at the end, we were able to build a, a communication center inside the prison 
with uh, and to have friends from outside who can who, who provide us with some computers and in jail where, where when we were prisoner we created a center when our fellow inmates could learn something which can prepare them uh, to be useful when they they, they left oh jail. My gosh. I think Fred, that's amazing. That's <laughs> absolutely amazing to be able to do that. How yeah. did you learn that you were going to be let out of prison? Um, it was, so at the beginning, I, it, I came at one point, I, I think I just, uh, I, I, I would not say despair, I was in a despair, but I, I, I say to myself, I will not believe anything about going out until I see really that I'm out. Because the fact is that when you are in the situation that I, I was, when people, someone tell you you will be free tomorrow and tomorrow that not happen, you become weaker and weaker with time. So at one point it, it was like a psychological barrier that I put on myself and say, okay, I will not uh, understand, I, I, will, I will not take all this idea of going, getting out until I see in reality that I'm out. So there was a negotiation around a, a, a dialogue which uh, the United, the African Union was trying to organize and one of the conditions of civil society o and opposition to go to that dialogue was to free political prisoner and principal and, and especially me, my friend Eve, and some other activists. So, and, and also there was a pressure of many NGOs, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and many others, and my fellow activists of, of Lucha, to uh, make sure I'm, uh, we are getting out of, out of uh, jail. So, at one point, the government accepts that we will be f they will free us, and the uh, Minister of Justice sign a, a uh, decision to say we they have to free us. But it took, uh, I think, two weeks, like two weeks, uh, between the time he signed and the time we were freed. So between the two weeks, it was also a period of uncertainty, and it's very difficult because at, what, at that moment you know that y your psychological, um, that in in your mind you are out, you you are ready to be out, and all that pressure of many months in prison come in you, and at the at the other time, as days are going and nothing happen, you are becoming you are uh, going through a, a despair so and this was just last year 2016 yeah just in August 2016 so, so you you get out of prison and why didn't you just say okay this is enough I'm I'm going home I'm gonna go spend time with my family instead you went back into Lucha and helping the people there helping build a government and a movement because I, I, I think a lot of what I will do after my imprisonment. And I've never think of uh, going out of Lucha in, in, in that moment. One of the reasons is that I'm, I, I was very young when I was arrested. And I'm, I'm still very young. Yes. And I consider like they, they, they took me time of my life when I could do uh, something different. If I decided just to give up and to go do normal things, maybe look for a job and start working my, my, my own life, I will lose the time I spend in jail. And I will not be able to, uh, I will not be able to avoid my other, other people to live the same situation like me, which I, I, can, I, can't, I can't want. So I decided to continue uh, working on transforming the, 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 the society because I think that is the only way I can make the time I spend in jail useful, for not only for me, but also for uh, all the generation. And that's why I can make, that, that w how I can make uh, sure that m some many other people will not 
have the same experience that I, I, I had. Fred, if a 17 or 18 year old young person from Congo would say to you, Mr. Bauma, how can you help us? How can you help me help my country? What would you say? Uh, the first thing I will tell him is that the situation seems to be um, very bad and it's hopeless situation. But uh, the future of our country depends only on choices we made today. And if we decide to stand up and act, then we, we will have change. The second thing I, I can tell him is that um, the change of, uh, of country, uh, of Congo, through, goes through two things, education, the education uh, of, about the, his civil and political right to know that he he has rights he has to ask and to fight for their right because he will not gain the, the their right uh, f freely and uh, act action he has not only to understand and to learn what is their right but he has to act in the way that he really he, he gain his, his freedom, he gained that change that he is looking for. And if everybody decide to, to act in the way of change, to make sure they understand what, what is the right, what could be the situation if everything goes, uh, went very well, and wh how they can make it together, we can expect to have change very, very soon. In the United States, we had a situation a lot like that about 250 years ago. But it was a time where people picked up weapons and there was a war. Is that what's going to happen in Congo? That situation had happened already. They had a um, war between uh, two s in the end of 19s and, uh, uh, and just a few, few years ago. And there's still some many rebel groups in, in, in Congo. Yours is a peaceful, non-violent, go through the system. Yes, and many of us has experimented, has been victim indirectly or indirectly of, of that violence. And we decided to choose a non-violent way of acting because we think that it is the only way we can b uh, build a, uh, a, uh, a, a peace that stand, that, that, that stand uh, forever. It, a, uh, how can I say it? It's, uh, I think you said it really well. The only way for you to build peace forever. Yeah. Fred, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you.